all the guests, people who were invited, who came, media, those people who were not invited but came, thank you for coming. Uh, Shahid Saab, stand up and present the gift and then... Can <laughs> We have the honor and pleasure with massive round of applause. Please welcome the great leader of Punjab, Chief Minister of Punjab, Mia Shabash. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> Honorable Lord Nazir, Honorable Lord Kurban, Honorable Lords, Honorable Members of uh, Punjab Assembly, and uh, Honorable Members of Delegation from Punjab, Pakistan, Honorable Members of Pakistani Community in Britain, Ladies and gentlemen, and last but not least, my dear friend Muzaffar, my class fellow from Government College Lahore, the very good president of Pakistan Muslim League in London, UK, and Khawati uh, Nuzrat, Assalamu Alaikum. It's really a, a great honor and a pleasure to uh, uh, be standing before you. Uh, uh, this beautiful environment, you know, Thames flowing with its uh, you know, wonderful speed. And uh, I'm extremely grateful to the host and the co-host for hosting this uh, wonderful gathering. I'm not here to make a long-winded speech. Uh, briefly speaking, uh, this visit of mine, uh, second in a row, I was here with my delegation last year, uh, an official invitation of uh, British government, and this year again. I have uh, uh, confided this with my colleagues that uh, British government need not invite us uh, consecutively in, a, uh, you know, in the second year, in the last year, when we are going into elections. They are uh, very uh, well-informed uh, people, British government. We have uh, uh, great uh, trustworthy relation with the British government and Britain has uh, always been supporting Pakistan for all good causes. But the reason they have invited us, and this is my assessment, I have no knowledge or privy to any information, is that uh, they have shown once again that they want to interact with us, they want to remain engaged with Pakistan, with the government of Punjab, and they are reposing their trust and confidence in whatever uh, cooperation is underway between uh, British government and uh, the government of Punjab, particularly with DFID. Uh, and one of their largest investment is uh, at the moment being undertaken in Pakistan and particularly in Punjab in the field of education, skills development, livestock, health. And of course, in the last three days we have signed uh, well, we call it uh, LOIs because I, I um, always try to avoid the word MOU. You call it, uh, you know, memorandum of understanding. I call it most outrageous understanding. So I avoid the uh, MOUs and I stick to LOIs, the much better. And these agreements range from uh, cooperation between British universities with uh, Punjab universities. Uh, from opening up uh, campuses over there, stipends, higher education, and research and development in the field of energy. In uh, the University of uh, Engineering Lahore, and as you know, energy is our biggest problem today. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what I uh, said in my speech the other day at the Forum of Pakistan-British uh, 
uh, businessmen forum. But suffice it to say that uh, this is our biggest problem, biggest challenge. And imagine uh, British universities uh, with the uh, British Council, DFID, trying to encourage us and support us in long term and short term measures in uh, R&D in uh, finding us uh, ways and means how to promote coal-based power generation, etc. A job which was uh, to be done and undertaken by the federal government. But uh, I'm not going to dilate on that. It will be a waste of time. Suffice it to say that we are making headways in this behalf. And of course, uh, inshallah, we are going to reap uh, results like we have done in the field of uh, education and skills help. And I'm just coming out from a meeting arranged by different uh, in uh, their premises where Sir Michael Barber was uh, one of the participants. And I think my colleagues uh, who were uh, with me in that meeting would uh, bear me out when Sir Michael Barber said in no uncertain terms that, um, ladies and gentlemen, I have had experience of uh, working <coughs> in UK as the advisor of uh, former Prime Minister uh, of Labour Party and he's working closely with uh, the present British government but he has also experience of working with scores of uh, countries where he had uh, shown his wits in uh, promoting education. And these were his words today, I'm quoting, that uh, I've never come across a better experience of working with then government of Punjab. This is, this is uh, appreciation of uh, not uh, me as Chief Minister, it's the people of Punjab, the government of Punjab and people of Pakistan that they are uh, reposing their trust and their confidence in terms of our very transparent relations, in terms of our commitment, in terms of our dedication to promote education, promote skills and uh, acquire knowledge from them. And this is all doable without any, any charges, except that you needed uh, that urge, that fire in your belly, which Lord Nazir, um, I'm sorry to say, was missing. But then it's never too late. I hope uh, six months down the line, uh, new election will take place, hopefully, and uh, with uh, the voice of the people, and at the hustings, uh, you know, people will hear all of us, and when on election day, I mean, with the voice of the people, whosoever is returned to serve the people, I hope will further, you know, build on these initiatives, and uh, regardless wherever we are, in the opposition or in the government, I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, that we will be as dedicated and as inspired, as encouraged to serve you, whether you are you know, living here in Britain or back in Pakistan, because without that, Pakistan will never find its lost position in the cognitive nations. And you as the great ambassadors of Pakistan here in your own right, some of you are uh, businessmen, some of you are uh, or um, you know, doing some uh, professional job in a hospital, in a school, or in a firm. I think uh, you have done wonders here, and this collective, you know, energy must be synergized into something which uh, our future generations uh, should be proud of. This is uh, difficult, but not impossible. Uh, further, uh, <coughs> moving on further, I'd say that we have are some of our honorable members sitting here who probably uh, you know, uh, uh, are going to be deprived to serve uh, Pakistan because of uh, you know, Dori Shariat. And I would uh, like to address them, address to them, I, Dr. Chauhan sitting here, Nadim Khan sitting here, that uh, don't lose heart. I wish uh, this was not a problem coming your way to serve Gujranwala, serve Jhelum and other places. But since it is a, now a constitutional uh, impediment and little uh, uh, that we can do about um, uh, to improve this situation, I would say that uh, don't lose heart. Uh, uh, you should be uh, first proud Pakistanis and you are British Pakistanis. We respect that and you've earned it through your hard way. But uh, according to the law of the land, I think uh, if you really want to you know, continue serving Pakistan, and the provinces of uh, the country, then under the law, I will uh, recommend to you that give up your uh, 
of your um, the British nationality and come and serve with us, join hands as you have been doing the last four years. But you want to stay as a British national, that's your choice. Uh, my uh, total sympathies are with you. My total prayers are with you. You are our uh, uh, team members and I have a lot of respect for all of you. Uh, but I think we will discuss this issue separately also uh, you know, in, a, in, a, in a smaller meeting. Uh, three things uh, in conclusion. <clears throat> what is uh, uh, troubling Pakistan today? Uh, in an in a absolutely you know, uh, summarized fashion, Number one, galloping corruption, nepotism, and misgovernance. Number two, uh, uh, load sharing, which has hit Pakistan's economy uh, like anything. Uh, our exports have gone down, our uh, imports have gone, our, our, our production has gone down, our uh, employment uh, has gone down, and it is really, uh, you know, hitting Pakistan very hard. And third is, of course, uh, terrorism. All these three challenges have to be addressed to in its real perspective. Uh, you will ask me, is, do is it doable? My answer is yes, and a big yes. It is difficult, but not impossible. If uh, Japan and Germany, after the Second World War, they were totally raised to ground, and look, in uh, 50, 60 years, they have sprung up again on the uh, face of the world like very strong economies through dint of hard work, through honesty of purpose, through untiring efforts. Similarly, these problems are not bigger than those uh, defeats. I think uh, from uh, the ashes of defeat, they have uh, risen and touched the zenith of glory. These issues, these challenges, these difficulties can be handled and we can defeat the monster of terrorism, we can defeat the monster of, uh, of corruption, we can defeat the monster of uh, load sharing, provided we act as Pakistanis and not some of us as con men, as commission agents and uh, indulging in loot and plunder. You can't have the cake and also eat the cake. You have to give up one to achieve the other. That is the way forward. And uh, I'm not here to speak for myself. I think uh, by the grace of God, today I was with Mr. Francis Mode, uh, the, the Minister uh, of State for uh, uh, you know, Transparency and All. And uh, he was, uh, I mean, we, we, we met last year. We took their uh, uh, presentation to Lahore, showed to our cabinet. But believe me, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very institutionalized arrangement over here. Ours is not. But what we have done in the last four years in Punjab, I can assure you that uh, a budgetary, rough budgetary figure, we must have uh, saved Punjab's coffers, uh, you know, to the tune of more than one billion dollar in terms of uh, curbing corruption. And this is not, this is not a joke, because uh, when you are operating in an island of uh, trouble, and uh, you know, the um, uh, neighbors are not supporting you, rather uh, making schemes against you, then, uh, you know, obviously the, uh, the, the challenge becomes more difficult. But if this is still manageable, despite all this, I think uh, you must then be sure of the fact that Pakistan has tremendous potential. We have land, we have uh, arable land, we have brains, we have bankers, we have scientists, and what not. The only thing we are lacking is the will to do. And if we you know, sort of uh, pledge to ourselves, to our people, and to our creator that we will translate our, uh, our speeches and our um, articulation into action. Believe me, not only we will be able to compensate for the losses of the past, but, in, but definitely in times to come, depending what speed we have attained, we will be, alhamdulillah, be able to, you know, get out of this uh, quagmire and uh, and create a Pakistan which ultimately would be Qaeda and Iqbal's Pakistan. Uh, finally, I'd like to uh, thank uh, uh, the host and the co-host again. Thank you all for this, uh, um, you know, participation. We are all encouraged, and I assure Pakistani business community, and I assure British Pakistanis that you are our brothers and sisters. I am your servant as much as servant of uh, your kith and kin back home. 
and uh, there is a cell operating here under Mr. Zubair with the supervision. And uh, you know the biggest problem I know which you face is kabza ho gaya zameen ke upar fana ho gaya, and I have dealt with it uh, you know constantly. And I want to assure you that if there's any problem, please let us know through the cell. We will be there at your beck and call. Uh, I gave an example the other day at my speech. I want to give another example here. Yeah, that uh, so-called Muslim League big wig in Lahore had uh, captured a piece of land near Rai Wind. Uh, the way we got that land recovered and gave it to a British Pakistani owner and we, they were all put behind the bars. I I stopped uh, the entrance uh, the, the, the entry of that British Pakistani uh, sorry, the, the Muslim League big wig into my office and I said no, nothing going. So it's not a question of uh, a Muslim leaguer or a People's Party or a Jamaat Islam, it's a question of, uh, of uh, you know, trying to respect the, 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 the laws of the land, trying to, you know, promote justice and fair play and equality. Only then can we really uh, be partners in this uh, global village with uh, the most uh, going states of this, uh, of this globe. Otherwise, we'll be lagging behind in a very big way. Investment is shy, it has many problems. I've countered one, load shedding. There is that the courts, lower courts get compromised and then contractual obligations are not honored and so on and so forth. Suffice it to say that I am there, my government is there to serve you. Please uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to let the cell know and uh, you know some of your uh, uh, relatives and friends come to Pakistan. I meet them and I try to assist them my investor is my master. So please, if you decide to come and invest in Pakistan, not only I'll salute you, I'll be there to serve you to the health so that you really, that you really, you know, contribute and pay back to your motherland what your motherland has uh, done to you. Thank you very much, Pakistan.